Gruesome Magazine. Hello, once again, I'm your host, Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-host, Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, Dave Dreyer, and I will take a look at various spooky, scary, gory genre offerings. Tonight, we're reviewing Night Drive out now on VOD, so this is going to be exciting. Let me introduce my crew, starting off with the one and only Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, but I, I didn't understand the title because I never drive at night anymore. There's, well, I, I don't that's go, the point, though. Actually, yeah, I don't. Is. I don't drive in the daytime either. I just never go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea what to do with that. All right. Also joining us this week is Crystal <laughs> Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl. How you doing, Crystal? Well, the point is, you get a you get a driver. See, so you don't. Have oh, to drive, okay. But you know, I mean, I don't Getting, do much either. And AJ Bowen shows up and drives you around. I would totally let him drive me around. Oh, wow. That nice has video. more meanings than one. So that's awesome. <laughs> it does. Whoa. AJ. <laughs> you want a number? He's All right. Rounding out the crew he is. Uh, rounding out the crew is the one and only <laughs> Dave Dreyer, who also wants AJ's number. Um, how you doing, uh, yeah. AJ? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Probably, probably different reasons, but after, yeah. <laughs> after, after Crystal's shocking confession, I don't know what to do here. Mm. <laughs> kind of loss of words, but I'm good. I'm well. You are well, sir. <laughs> you are. You look great. Good to see you. I, I'm, I'm good to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to review the movie a Night Drive. We're going to give our first impressions. That'll be spoiler-free. Then we're going to dive into it. And uh, we might get into some spoilers during our discussion, so forewarning there. And then we'll wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. And you want to stick around for that. All right. But what film are we talking about? Well, we're talking about Night Drive. Light traffic, heavy shit. I like that. That is... Yeah. I like the poster. I like it yeah, quite the a bit. Poster, the poster's yeah. better than the movie. Right. It, yeah. Great tagline. Yeah. It pulls into theaters and DVD VOD August 6th, 2021. Uh, that came straight from the uh, uh, the PR firm. That was great. Uh, it's from Dark Sky Films. Uh, directed by Brad Baru and uh, Megan Leon. And Megan Leon, once with an H, once without... I'm not, it's uh, actually you're supposed to have the H, so I forgot the H on the writer. It's all right. Is, um, <laughs> yeah. A cast includes A.J. Bowen, Sophia De La, De La Lee Marbell, and uh, Scott Poitras as Frank, who didn't make the cut on the uh, name. Sorry about that. The synopsis is, a rideshare driver's life is turned upside down after an unexpected series of misfortunes. That's actually okay. a pretty good description. Um, this reminds me of a couple films from the 90s that we would get where, uh, except for, you know, right share wasn't a thing yet. It was just, you know, people in their lives. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But anyway, let's start off with our first impressions. <laughs> and Dave Dreher, since you are top left, you are up hey, first. Hey, I get to go first just because of where I'm at, huh? Yeah, yeah. What is your first impression uh, of my drive? Uh, my first impression is... Uh, I found myself being very bored by this film, uh, uh, but, but, but yes, I was, I was bored. There's a very long stretches of just not much happening, uh, in this movie. And, and I like AJ Bowen, great actor. He does a good job in this. Actually, everyone does really well in this. Uh, it's a well-made movie. Uh, it, it gets a little confusing at times and they throw in a plot twist at about the two thirds mark that makes it actually makes it a little better. But uh, it's a little, little, kind of a little too little too late for me there. And I don't know, the, the, the A.J. Bone character, who I can't remember, he just kind of goes along with some really dumb ideas that any normal human would go, fuck no, I ain't doing that. What are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> ah, hell, why would I possibly fucking do that? And uh, he just kind of does it without even questioning it. And so he, they kind of lost me there when he started making like really dumb decisions. Uh, obviously, they were needed to progress the plot along. Uh, I guess... At the end of the day, it pays off okay, but it's a real long night drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a long, long yeah, night. So, long yeah, night. I, I just found myself being very bored by the majority of this. Shame, shame. 
All right, up next is the one and only Jeff Moore. Jeff, sir, what was your first impression of Night Drive? Well, I'm partially the same as Dave in that I, it takes a long time to get going, and there's several times this is, uh, you know, he's like a, an Uber type kind of thing, right? He gets called to pick her up, take her somewhere, and she starts adding different stops in. And right off the bat, she does something where it's kind of like, okay, that's the end of my driving this person around. <laughs> but it doesn't, doesn't seem to bother him too much. Uh, so, yeah, that, I, I, I like the acting. I thought A.J. Bowen was good, and I thought uh, Sophie Dalla, Dalla uh, was good, too. Um, they're like the two that are on screen the whole the entire time. And I did like the twist because I'm a sucker for that kind of twist in a movie. Um, I love that stuff because it makes me think about possibilities we don't normally have to encounter. So I liked it. And I kind of liked the ending, too. So anyway, okay. yeah. All right. I mean, so, so, yeah, it takes a long time to get going. And you're kind of like going, where is this going? Why is he putting up with this? And you never really find out. Uh, but there's, I think, the fact that he stuck with it as long as he did. And then when we get to the twist, I was all in then. You are all in once we got to the twist, huh? All right. I can, I can buy that. I can buy that for a dollar. All right, Crystal Cleveland, you are up next. What was your first impression of Night Drive? Really? I could buy that for a dollar. That's only because you feel the same way about the movie. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, that's fabulous. Um, but I was... Look, I love AJ. I think he was great in this. I I mean, obviously if anyone has taken a ride share before, it's kind of something that's I've had I've ha let's just put it this way. I have actually had more interesting ride shares than this movie. So <laughs> wow. that's kind of a problem, I think. You're, I mean, you're I know, still around, so I'm wondering what happened. No, 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 no. I mean, they're I not, know, but they're not. <laughs> I know, and, and I don't mean by like exactly what happens. I just mean oh, okay, okay. the the conversations because this is it's supposed to be intense and high intensity and it's it's not i literally zoned out at a point and i rare i rarely rarely do that watching a film um so that's saying a lot um it was shot well and i think that that the sound quality is great i think they did a great job color grading actually i think the editing was good because the editing couldn't have saved this thing um but there is just some there, there are some glaring holes and issues with this whole story and plot. I mean, it's obvious that she and the guy knew each other when they walk into that house, and yet he didn't pick up on the fact that they knew each other until later. Oh, oh, you keep calling him Frank. But, well, yeah, they obviously knew each other when they had that conversation. Uh, it's just, it's just so, it's just, it borderlined on just, a farce but it farce. wasn't supposed to be so that bothers me and the the twist <laughs> was nice and i thought oh well good here's where we get something fun and it it did improve the movie but it wasn't able to fix it it wasn't any sort of payoff that's gonna pay for the other freaking 50 minutes or whatever it was that i had to sit through I, you know, I say it like it's just horribly tragic and awful, and, and it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't, I wouldn't recommend it because I just couldn't, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that, yeah. I, there you that's, go. <laughs> that sounds fair. Uh, I, yeah. I had a different experience. I, I enjoyed this quite a bit. I liked our characters. I thought that uh, he reminded me of the Jeff Daniels character from Something Wild, right? He was... He was kind of looking for something to shake things up. So it wasn't it wasn't a problem that things were a little off. It was kind of like that was going to break the monotony because we were seeing, you know, like five minutes of him being really just kind of bored with this job, right? He doesn't, even when they have the dialogue, he doesn't really like 
this driving job. So when she's doing something a little wacky, he's he's all in. So I didn't have a single problem. That wasn't my problem. I did well. That was Dave. With it. Yeah, Dave made, made mentioned that. So I didn't have any mm-hmm. problem with his motivation for hanging out there. Um, and, but anyway, so I I was all in, and I thought you know this it. It reminded me of Something Wild, although Something Wild is a much better movie, or After Hours is the other one I'm thinking of, um, which is Martin Scorsese. And we're talking about Jonathan Demi, Martin oh, Scorsese. So, yeah. you know, we're talking about really strong filmmakers here. Um, not that these two aren't, but uh, these are, <laughs> those are Goliaths in the business. Uh, but it has the same kind of um, tone to me, or at least it's aspiring for that tone. I enjoyed it. And I thought the twist was, was nifty when, you know, it's kind of like, uh, finding out what's in the box, you know, that the, uh, that, you know, from, uh, uh, Pulp Fiction, you know, <laughs> you find out what's in the box and it's, it's something totally unexpected, uh, because she's carrying around this, this, you know, she's after something and when, and, and they finally open in here. So that was kind of neat. And, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it caught my attention. It kept me entertained. I wasn't bored. I had a good time. The twist made it better. Yes. So I'll grant you that. And I really liked our two leads. So I, I must have had happy sauce. Yeah, you must have. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, I'm really, I look, as far as the quality of this film, it's good. I did not find anything wrong with the quality or design of it. I just, it was not even good conversations. And I just, look, I get it. This guy is bored. I totally understand why he went along with it and then all the stuff that they did. But when, I, they don't make him out to be an idiot. And yet when they walk into that house and it's from the first like a few lines that those two deliver to each other, I'm like, well, they know each other clearly. Then they didn't address when he goes at the end, when he goes and takes care of some stuff, mm-hmm. what that he uh, apparently that guy was following her or chasing her. That has to be the way that that he found them anyway. There's just there's just. Yes, if you, if I if I wrote it all down and analyzed it for you, you'd be like, oh, yeah, yes. I'm with you on that part. Crystal, I'm mm-hmm. with you. There's What's a the, lot what, of the, the yeah. part about the, the actual traveling. No, the, the 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 part yeah. I'm with is when when uh, Frank when they when they mm-hmm. run into Frank. I don't want to give it away. I know I'm like, yeah. and he says something yeah. right off the bat that I, that is like, <laughs> so Duh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I no, I'm with you there as well. I it was obvious. Now why he didn't pick but, up but, on but it? But then he would have followed. Okay, to the point where he comes into the picture. Remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, he took care of business there, and yet what happened to him coming back into the picture? Because he was clearly following someone. Do you see what I'm going? I'm. It, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give too much away, but there's a lot of plot holes. Well, which, which one? Things. Okay. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll take it offline because I don't know which he you're talking about because there's two. Well, Frank, here. obviously okay, Frank. Frank. All right, okay. Frank, Frank, the, the way that the timeline goes and then the way when he goes back, to fix, I can't. Stuff <laughs> and <going>. and <laughs> Frank is played by Scott Poitras, who yeah. we've covered a lot and, and is a good actor too. He, he's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. The acting was fine. Actually, I think I think AJ Bone was cute and kind of charming. She, I think she could have been better. I think she could have been harder. She was kind of or more eccentric or something because. Mm. Because she seemed like she was harsh at points, and then yet she clearly had a heart for him. It's uh, there. There wasn't. There wasn't a lot to like grasp onto. I think it could have been. I think it could have been more fun if she had been more fun. I, Maybe that's part of it. I would. I, I would. I would agree with that. I'd play that yeah. for them. Uh, I. It also yeah. needed a little bit more. It needed more people involved, right? Because it's really just our three, and there's a cop involved. It really need a little bit more mm-hmm. engagement. Yeah, um, I think that's world. true too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I don't I think see the, that. the stakes weren't necessarily high enough. So you know, and I'm and but I'm doing this comparing it to the two films I mentioned earlier because um, <laughs> they they had a lot of engagement and a lot of things going on. But at the same time, 
you know, it's, it's not that for those films. So I, I guess I'm with you on that, but I still enjoyed it. How's that? Yeah, no, that's fine. I liked, I liked her. I thought she was uh quirky and, uh, you know, the, the thing that's weird is I didn't get her full personality until the end. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, uh, and again, I don't want to give too much away, but I felt like everything played into this whole idea of what she described, what she was doing as. I Like, I guess, here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. Not not these guys. I mean guys out there. Um Look, there's a joke in here, or it's supposed to be a joke, where he talks about listening to a song that has Bing Crosby in it, and she doesn't know who that is, and she assumes it's Bill Cosby. If oh, that's yeah, yeah. funny to you, then you'll like this movie, I guess. Yeah, Bing Crosby and uh, David Bowie. I just, yeah. I was like, okay. I didn't, so you're I trying to say she's really young, and she doesn't know who Bing Crosby is, I guess. I mean, I... <sighs> Like I told you, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not no. trying. I just, I oh. really feel like there. I think it could have been okay, but there, it needed just ah, some zhuzhing, some, some bunch, fun and bunch. Yeah, yeah. Bunch. Dave, yeah, because you... he was really good. I think he played his role perfectly, and I think she wasn't bad. She didn't detract, but I think that had she been directed to do it in a different way be weirder be more this or more that she just came across as kind of not oh how well, i wish I, I could I'm, just pinpoint it completely. i'm not sure i bought any chemistry between them i think that would be my biggest grape that's you know, part of it be, too the chemistry mm -hmm. between them. but dave you you like to nitpick um not nitpick let's say critique <laughs> uh you like to critique um uh strips as well do you have anything to add to what Crystal was saying? Because... No, I, I, I think Crystal's actually dead on. We're, I, we feel uh, pretty much the same on this one. I I, tuned, I didn't bother analyzing it as much as you guys did. I tuned out of this one pretty early. <laughs> yeah. And I was, uh, yeah, you know, and I was just like, yeah, this, this one's going to make no sense. I mean, none of it was plausible, right? I, I mean, none of it was plausible. So when we finally get to the point, the twist, that adds the plausibility, it didn't matter. <laughs> so you the sci-fi yeah. sci yeah. element yeah, yeah, it, it, it just didn't matter there oh were, my god because he's, he, so he'd have been right. gone he's anyway right he's so yeah. right yeah so yeah. and so i was just like oh okay well all right well at least they tried to explain all the stupidity that came before it but uh you know that was that that was the end of it but and you're uh, you guys are right though a lot of it was just the fact that there there needed to be more over the topness there needed to be more absurdity and it just wasn't there they tried to play it straight or normal and need, so, some, need some more quirk. He yeah. swore up and down that two beers didn't make him drunk. Okay. I believe that. I'm yeah. I, I can buy that totally. Then why wouldn't you call the cops? So in what in what possible realm of Satan's hell would you <laughs> get that body and put it in your vehicle and leave with it? Like yeah. there. There's no or way he is. Well, there's I no think, way he's gonna he's gonna blow it's eye just enough to be worried That's about. just yeah. stupid. That's just stupid. I thought I, mean. I, I thought he was a little bent too. I mean, by the end of it, you find out that he's got a little bit of a mean streak in him as well. So, but it was a fucking accident. He could have gotten out of it. It's not like he but was. Was it? <laughs> well, according well, to him, was it, it was, an accident? Well, you know? he's trying to play it off. Uh, I I don't know. I have a feeling. He, well, anyway, maybe I was having a little too much fun with the movie. And I I okay. So there's one aspect that I like that I wish they had done more with, and it seemed like it was almost a throwaway line. Is that the uh, there's a certain element that we're talking about? You know, the the uh, I'm going to call it the Pulp Fiction element. Uh, you know, the case, right? And mm -hmm. um, Charlotte says that there's there's actually more than her that are involved, and I and I don't think she was talking about Frank. Because I think Frank is an adversary, not somebody that's a partner. So I wonder. Well, are... No, he is a partner. No. Was he a partner? Because I thought he was end, an adversary. At the end, he at says he's end. waiting for some flighty girl. But that wasn't, that didn't necessarily make her a partner. That didn't mean that she wasn't an adversary either. I, I don't know if that defined it. I think it did. No. I, I don't, I'm not saying that there's not more people involved as well, but they were tight they were clearly yeah hard. i just took that as he was he was part of the game oh I, I i took it as the opposite yeah. that he didn't 
that she was an adversary because she was a flighty girl. I, I, I took it. I took it totally different. <laughs> well, I mean, that was a quality of his, of the adversary, not necessarily that. Never mind. It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with it at all. All right, let's go well, ahead. You're and all adversaries when you're in a game, right? Yeah. Is it a big well, game? Okay. Or you're all in competition. Competition. Like, yeah. but I, but I think that maybe he. Uh, I think maybe the he wanted first the intentions. Okay. Well, yeah, they all did, but they could have shared it. I think there was a point where they were planning on sharing it, and then it. Obviously, when you deal with something like this, it, you know, corrupts the soul. I was more interested in what he was doing there at that point. Was he going? Never mind. I can't give anything away. <laughs> <laughs> I know you start getting those paradoxes that make the whole thing kind of mm -hmm. fall apart. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score of one to five, and our favorite scene. Uh, so, but before we do, if you are listening to this review, we want to thank you for hanging out with us. We hope you're enjoying not only this review, but many others that we have on the site, uh, catch it on here on YouTube, or if you like, uh, to listen to them, you can do the podcast on Apple podcasts. Uh, we, uh, if you want to help us out, you can subscribe or share with a friend and that does wonders. Uh, we also want to hear your comments down below. Make sure you do that. Uh, let us know what we missed. I'm sure we missed something. <laughs> Dave slept through it, I'm I sure. <laughs> no, Dave doesn't know. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Our final thoughts, our score, favorite scene. Dave, sir, you are up first. Uh, yeah, final thoughts. Just reiterating what we said before. Uh, it's a very slow burn. Good acting. Uh, adequate direction, I think. Every you know, I mean, it was a well-made movie. Uh, just uh, not a particularly good story, unfortunately. Um, boy, favorite scene is going to be tough because you don't want to give anything away. So my favorite scene I'm not going to do because to give it to you would kind of basically <laughs> give away the, the whole wow. fucking movie. Uh, so, but, yeah. so, yeah, well, I, I don't know how to say it without giving it away. So I'm just yeah. going to say the, uh, really, the only thing, that, it's the only thing that saves this movie, at least in my opinion, is the twist, and you'll know it when you see it. But yeah. You'll know it when yeah. you get there. Uh, and But that is the best part of the movie, uh, at least it was for me. And actually, there's a scene right around that same time that's actually a better scene. But uh, oh, to explain yeah. that scene would give away the twist. So, um, Well, there's a couple. Yeah. Little, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, so and I'm just going to give it a middle of the road 2.5. Yeah. That's it. Okay. okay. That's, that's actually better than I thought you were. Going to do. <laughs> All right, Jeff Moore, you're up next. Your final thoughts, your score, favorite scene. Um, so we're not saying what the twist is, right? But uh, we, we haven't yet. Uh, up to this we, point, we've managed to keep it a secret. So, well, we, so we, I, we what I will say is this twist is one of my. I, I'm willing to forgive a lot when they have this twist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that makes I, sense. I, then. I, I just love things that involve this. So. Um, and I liked the acting. I liked her character and my opinion of her changed as time went on, as did my opinion of AJ Bowen's character. Um, the doc kind of mentioned, I'm giving this a three because it does have like plot holes, but I'm, I'm glad I watched it. And, uh, I was wondering, you know, about a third of the way through, I'm like, I sure hope something happens. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Something happens. <laughs> so, um, anyway, favorite scene, boy. Uh, so, I'm going to dance around this too. This is, I don't know, this is probably silly, but I, it's, I want to say when the when the twist is revealed, the way that she chooses to do it, I thought was. It was funny, but it was also indicative oh, of her character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, are, are was... you talking about right before, right before the kick? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what you I'm took, talking you about. took my favorite scene. That's it. Uh, oh, really? Favorite... Yeah, that's... Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, I know you don't. That must be <laughs> a man <laughs> thing. That's a man thing. Clearly. No, it might be. It might be. <laughs> no, it was. It was that there were so many choices, and that's what she picked. You know, of course so. she did. Of course, of course she did. did. Yeah. All right. Crystal, you're up next. Your final thoughts, your score, and favorites. Okay. 
I think it's clear what my feelings are of this movie. It's well made. <laughs> I'm going to give it a two and a half, too, because oh, of nice. the quality of the movie. And I think people will find it mildly entertaining. Um, mildly. My favorite scene is something... It's, it's interesting how, Doc, you mentioned that you felt like the movie needed more interaction. And I it never occurred to me until you said that, but I absolutely think that you're correct 1000%. And my favorite scene actually speaks to that. And it is um, the cashier stare down at the hardware store or the girl yeah. when, when it shows the eyes and it's like, great. she kind of looks at him and he lo- see, and had they had more of that, this movie would have been just perfect. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Yeah. It was cute. It was simple, you know, but it was, that was really funny. And, yeah okay that's fair that's fair i like that no you're right you're right i um okay so i enjoyed this movie more than you guys uh for some reason um i guess i i I don't know it it spoke to me i I thought i liked the aj bone character i liked the you know the him being thrust onto the edge and you know it, it seemed like a thing that was happening to him and to his character. His, his character was starving for something to happen. And this girl brought something to the table. Um, and, uh, and then it got wackier and wackier and I, you know, I enjoyed it. So I'm giving it three and a quarter. So just a little bit more than Jeff, just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Small bit more. So my favorite we scene, how, we know how that. much Jeff likes that. Just, mm-hmm. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Don't do that to me. All right, so um, the uh, my favorite scene is the same, uh, you know, kick, kicker <laughs> scene, because um, that was kind of that was funny. He's like, he, his reaction was my reaction. It's like that's when you're going to do it. Uh, so if it's not that, I guess it's going to be the confrontation when they confront Frank in mm-hmm. in the house, and you know, or is that is that's not the scene somebody else picked? Was it anyway? No, it, nope. it, um you know, it, that was actually pretty tense, I thought. And, you know, there's a double tap. Let's just put it that way. There's a double tap. You got to do the oh, double more tap. Than, more yeah, than. More than. Yeah. And, um, and what was interesting is our character wasn't really phased by that. I, I mean, he was, but he wasn't, right? Other, so I, I don't know. I started seeing more, the more things happened, the more I saw this character, like, not being surprised by it all. And, or um, phased by it, or yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I mean, I do think he had an but, arc. That was not yeah, a question, but yeah. yeah. Right. But at, but at the end, you you see what happens to his character. His character makes a different decision. So anyway, um, there you go. There's our review for Night Drive, which is out now on VOD and in uh, theaters and digital. So go check it out and let us know what you think in the, in the comments down below. <clears throat> and I hope AJ. <laughs> Forgives us all. Um, <laughs> you, hope, you hope what? Oh, hey, hey he was fuck. He was fabulous. He was. He was not he was. the problem. So, I'm sorry. I have to be honest. I'm just honest. <laughs> all right, uh, Jeff, Crystal, Dave, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for Bob. having us. Sorry, right. guys. Sorry, sorry. You're welcome. Sorry, people who love this movie. <laughs> now you're making me feel all guilty. No, I'm don't feel cry. guilty. It's fine. I'm going to go cry. Aww. <laughs> all right, you right somewhere? Let's say, no, no. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Some magazine.